now the next thing the cost concept or historical cost concept because everything that we have we are covering today is has been covered somewhere down in your book and uh, you know half of the meaning comes through the name itself you can easily figure out what this means through the name itself right as per this concept asset must, must be shown at its cost price which is the cost of acquisition less depreciation in the books of account fixed asset are never shown at the market price so let's suppose because we have done you know so many practical problems whenever we are uh, you know talking about a particular fixed asset let's suppose a fixed asset that we have bought it for rupees 50 lakh and because of the cost concept we have to make sure that we are showing the cost of the machinery from the price that we have bought and there is any depreciation we'll reduce the depreciation and we'll talk about the cost not the market price of that particular product so i'll you know simplify this with the help of an example let's talk about a mobile phone i bought a mobile phone for rupees 30000 let's say right and that i got at some discount i got it at a cheaper price i got it at some discount now at 30000 i have used it for a year the depreciation let's let's be 10% or in case in generally gadgets it's 20% so 20% of 30000 is 6000 now the price of that asset or mobile phone is 24000 so i have to make sure that i record the price of my phone at that that cost not at the market price the market price of that phone is currently rupees 36000 so even though the market price is 36000 i cannot say that my phone my asset is priced at that particular price my phone is not at 36000 my phone you know even after getting depreciated depreciated will be the actual cost of that particular asset i'll get i will get to know that actual cost i cannot calculate saying that okay the market price is rupees 36000 so my phone is price my phone should be priced at 36000 no that's not the case my phone will be priced at whatever the cost that i have acquired and less depreciation so that is because of cost concept or historical cost concept cost concept now the next thing is realization concept so basically in this concept the sale the revenue from any business transaction is derived whenever you actually deliver those orders so let's take an example of flipkart or mintra flipkart mintra amazon i have bought something from mintra now on 10th of the uh, 10th of june i have bought something from mintra now what happens after two days they actually deliver me that product and so in this case they will realize that product whenever i they will realize this revenue whenever they have delivered that product right but let's suppose they decided to record the sale on 10th of june itself they decide to record the sale on 10th of june itself whenever they when they received my order now what is happening during transit on 11th of june i cancel the order so do they still get that uh, get that value no they don't because on 11th I'm cancelling my order on 10th they have just received the order they're not they haven't delivered that order to me so on 12th when they actually deliver me that order then only we can say that this is being realized so that is uh, that comes under the that uh, they, then only they can say that they have earned revenue from that particular transaction because they have finally delivered me that product now i have given you three possibilities on 10th they are recording is that as uh, it as a sale which is which is not possible under realization concept because there is a fault maybe i can cancel the order on 11th of june but on 12th whenever they deliver me the product it will be considered as a business revenue under realization concept so this is what realization concept talks about you will earn the revenue on the day when you deliver those products when you whenever you make the sale so, so that is the realization concept not when you record that sale when you actually deliver or hand over the product to the customer now dual expect concept so this is simply saying that every transaction has two expect one expect of transaction is debited via while the other is credited we all know about this that you know accountancy follows dual accept concept so every transaction has dual expect some one will be debited and the other account will be credited 
accounting equation is based on this concept for every debit there is an equivalent credit this statement demonstrate dual expect concept so we follow the accounting equation concept under this dual expect so if we making any changes in our asset side we have to make sure we make the respective changes in our liability side as well so dual expect concept is that every transaction has an equal effect on asset and liabilities which i just stated so this concept helps accounting in detecting error so whenever you know there is some error that is being uh, shown in our books of account but we are not able to figure it out where it is so by this if there is no corresponding transaction if we have we are you know crediting something but we are not debiting uh, the same thing then we are realizing that okay we have made some error right it is because of the help of dual expect account concept we are able to figure it out right so these are the nine main concept that you have to uh, remember i hope everyone who is following the video is still able to connect with me and i have been trying to make it so simple that you can easily remember this these concept and uh, uh, for your surprises uh, you actually have received a question based on accrual concept in your UGC net paper. So, you know, these are not something that you can simply ignore. The concept based questions definitely comes. It's not a straightforward question that they are going to ask. So, you have to be very much sure with what a particular concept says. So, you know, be it going concern concept, they can easily ask you from where you can bifurcate between what is a fixed asset and which concept which accounting concept talks about you know uh, de de defining a long period uh, or a short period for a particular asset so we have to know that going concern going concern concept defines it right so there are two other concept left so the tenth one is revenue recognition concept revenue is recognized in the period in which it is on irrespective of whether it is received or not during the period so we have talked about this the revenue recognition period so we'll recognize whenever the revenue is being earned irrespective of the fact which is received or not during the period so if we are uh, you know making those transactions we are making those expenses to earn the revenue then we will talk about the revenue in that period not when we actually receive the cash in that place now the last is verifiable objective concept so there must be objective evidence of transaction which are capable of verification so you sh you should have bill with you we should have invoice with you so you should have your valid proof that there was a transaction that there are transaction happened so that is verifiable objective concept so these are all the concept that you have to study and you can definitely get a question based upon you can get a match of following your question because that was being asked in my paper and you know it has been there has been a certain pattern that you can see in the examinations so those question can repeat as well so i hope everyone is clear with the accounting concept now we'll talk about accounting conventions so first convention is convention of full disclosure so all the disclosure that has to be made being material or the relevant fact regarding financial statement should be fully disclosed Fully disclosure means that there should be full, fair, and educated disclosure of accounting information. So, because whenever, uh, as an investor, as a shareholder, I need to know whether the company is heading into the right direction or not. If there is no full disclosure, if they are being shady, I will be, you know, uh, in a dark zone. I will be thinking that okay, company is making good progress, but in actual, in actual uh, financial statement, no, they are, they are not. You know, their assets are weak. Uh, so that is where if you are making the full disclosure and if you are an aware investor you can easily figure it out that you know they are uh, not doing it, uh, the things that they promise so i should be moving out my money as soon as possible so convention of full disclosure has been made compulsory so that every investor can make a informed decision so that they don't get duped right so first is convention of full disclosure now the second is convention of consistency so meaning that convention of consistency means that same accounting principles should be used for preparing financial system year after financial statement year after year 
a meaningful conclusion can be drawn from financial statement of the same enterprise and there is a com- comparison between them over a period of time let's suppose you know uh, we are talking about a company earlier they used to follow different set of accounting rules now they are following a different set of accounting rules that makes so much hassle for an investor to make or draw a real comparison because earlier they were used to you know following a different set of rules now they are following different set of rules and so that is why there is need of convention of consistency so if we have to compare if we have to draw the comparison we can make sure that you know they were following the same set of rules throughout uh, throughout the years right so that is only possible when we are following the convention of consistency now convention of con- uh, conservatism so this means basically an anticipate no profit but provide for all possible losses so this is how you know actually all business you know they play smart so they actually provide for all possible losses so they can reduce their profit they can say that you know we didn't earn any profit so how we can provide dividend to our shareholders so this is a technique the convention of con- conservatism saying that we are in loss saying that okay we you know we have con- we have made so much expenses and those expenses didn't turn out to be in our favor and that is how, how they have you know converted into be a loss so it provide guidance for recording transaction in the book of the accounts it is based on the policy of playing safe in regarding to showing profit so we are basically playing safe in regarding to showing profit you are not those company you know saying showing that okay we are earning huge our shareholders or uh, you know doing exceptionally well so we will provide you more dividends again and again so the main objective is to show minimum profit so because of convention of conservatism we show minimum profit as a company and then profits should not be overstated if profit shows more than actual it may lead to distribution of dividend out of capital this is not a fair policy if you are overstating your profit so what actually happens you have to declare the dividends as well and uh, you know not one year then second year or some other instance in future so as a distribution of dividend that comes out of capital that will not be a fair policy because you are not earning that much of profit you are overstating your profit so you have to make sure that you know you are not overstating your profit if you have if you are making decent profit then it's fine but make sure that you provide for all possible losses you think that could be a loss you can think that could be a loss so if you are providing for all possible losses you are basically saying that we are not earning much of the profit so we cannot you know share much dividend with you guys so that is the main agenda behind that now convention of material uh, materiality so the materiality concept refer to the relative importance of an item or an event according to the american accounting association an item should be regarded as a material if there is a reason to believe that knowledge of it will influence the decision of an in- informed investor as i was saying that you have to disclose your uh, you know all the material information so what is material if that item has you know a uh, there is a reason that that item can influence the decision of an informed investor then uh, that could be counted as material omission of those uh, omission of paise and showing the round figure in financial statement is based on material uh, materiality concept small items like staplers calculator etc are not showed in the books of fixed asset although they are used in business for long period due to materiality concept so basically you every in every workspace you you stay for your calculator etc so these are the items that which are being used for a very long period till they perform well till uh, till those gadgets are working so you know you, you haven't seen them in your books of account in your balance sheet and under, under the fixed assets because you know we don't have to we don't give them enough relevant uh, you know importance and that is why only those relevant importance item because if there is their disclosure is important only those should be counted as material so that comes under the convention of materiality you know we don't have to show that we have this much table this stuff this much calculators those won't come under the convention of material uh, materiality so these are all the convention i have con- co- you know covered all the concepts now as we are moving towards the end of the video as i promised there are there is a surprise for all you guys those who have stick till the end and this is where the things get interesting 
so i have few questions from the previous year based on the unit that i have already covered uh, if you haven't watched the previous video do give it a watch and if you uh, even if you are well versed with the accounting things i think you can easily solve these questions these are your previous based course previous year questions and i have been saying since day one that you you have to prepare your uh, previous year questions really well and uh, i for all those who are watching this video i will request you to pause the video note the note down the question and attempt your answers because in this video i would, won't be give, providing with you uh, with the answers i want you to write the answer in the comment section so i can actually disclose the answer after few days so after few hours or few uh, you know within one or two days so attempt all the questions these are the first two questions which one of the following is a correct equation you have to mark the current correct equation and the second the sequence of which the following activities happen in the process of accounting you have to tell what is the process of accounting these are easier question but you know these are previous year questions so you have to be well versed with them so i hope you have gone through the first two questions now so third is when interest is allowed on capital which of the following is true with respect of accounting equation so you have to tell them which which one is true and then fourth is which of the following transaction would cause a change in owner's equity so you have to know which one will cause a transaction change in owner's equity who among the following is considered as father of accounting this i have discussed in my last video most of the questions i have discussed in, the, in my last video so if you are not able to answer it out uh, or figure it out you can watch the previous video and you can answer almost all the questions so father of accounting which of the following does not for, follow dual expect so there's a question for you and lastly the which of the following accounting equation is not correct so these are the question you know you can definitely expect a uh, few questions to be repeated in your examination as well these are the eight questions i want everyone who is watching this video to attempt all the eight questions and uh, in the comment section you have to write down the answer so i will provide the answer uh, within few days so i hope you can easily pause down the video and attempt all the questions so that will be all from my end in this video and uh, i'll be sharing the answers within few days whenever you attempt all these questions so you do attempt all the questions and if you are on this channel for the very first time do like the uh, you know you can leave a like do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so whenever i come up with a new video on uh, you know accounting and auditing so you can get the notification and uh, moreover if you are following if you are watching this video for the first time there are so many multiple videos i've already covered so many uh, units so that will be very helpful for all of you so watch those videos as well very informative for your examination purpose so that will be all from my end in this lecture and i will see you in the next class thank you for joining we'll meet you in the next video